Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Oh, let's talk about equipment. Yeah, okay, it's a dry subject, but I think it's a beneficial one, even though it's a bit of a dry video and it's not like showing you super duper OP replays. The reason I'm doing this video is because I think most players, and even some of us older players, have no clue when it comes to equipment loadouts. Now, in fairness, this is something that many players, especially newer ones, overlook. And even if they do manage to look, it's just to plonk on calibrated shells, for example. I therefore think it's actually a useful topic to discuss what equipment does and why it should benefit and what you should be considering when you're using or trying to attach these equipments. Now, jumping into the equipment part, which is loaded, as you can see, we, it's, a, it's a basically a three-tiered class matrix covering combat power, vitality, and specialization. Now, knowing what these mean and also knowing what your tank can do is therefore rather important because you may end up sticking the wrong equipment onto the wrong tank. Think mouse with a camo net, about as useful as a chocolate mouse in a desert. Now, let's take each tier in turn, horizontally rather than vertically. Now, for tier one, we're presented with combat power. Combat power basically deals with how effective the tank's gun can be, its rate of fire, the penetration, and stuff like that. Now, tier one gives you the choice of either a faster reload, thus better DPM, or better penetration. Calibrated shells, contrary to popular belief, do not increase your reload time from the base reload time. It just increases the overall penetration of 5%, on the AP and APCR shells, and 10% on heat and HE. Now, many players out there will always use calibrated shells. They always do. Oh, I want the penetration. And, you know, that could be the way you want to play it. But you just don't need them on every single tank. Now, let's take, for example, the Jaegeru, which has a baseline penetration of 299 millimeters on its standard ammunition which in itself is pretty darn good and will slice through almost every tank with ease. Now, adding calibrated shells will increase that to 314 millimeters because it will add an extra 15 millimeters. But ask yourself, does it really need that? The thing is, look at the armor on the Type 71, the most heavily armored frontal tank that we have in Tier 10, some would argue. And that front upper glacius plate is only 277 millimeters. So adding the extra 15 millimeters to a gun that will already pen that tank frontally is pretty pointless. The Type 71's turret, on the other hand, is 447 millimeters. So again, having 314 millimeters is equally as pointless. So is it really practical to use calibrated shells in this instance? Now, let's consider the gun rammer. The Yegiru has a base reload time of 16.09 seconds with a base DPM of 2,983. Now, if you add that gun rammer, that changes the DPM from 2,983 to 3,207, and it reduces that reload time to 14.97 seconds, which for tanks such as the Yegiru, which has that really long reload time, but really good pen, it is something worth considering. If you already have decent penetration, surely it's more beneficial to get the DPM up and the reload down rather than, you know, that extra couple of percentage in penetrating. Nevertheless, there are some tanks out there that already have pretty good DPM and a fast reload, but do lack penetration. Think along the lines of the WZ113, now, the WZ has a base DPM of 3,198 and a reload time of 7.88 seconds, but its pen is terrible at only 255. Now, clearly, with the pen being so poor, tanks like the WZ113 will benefit greatly from a calibrated shell rather than a gun rammer. Having calibrated shells increases the pen on the standard ammunition of the WZ to that of 268 millimeters. Okay, two millimeters short of the Type 71 plate. But if you load heat, then obviously you have 369 millimeters of pen, which will slice through the bottom plates of literally everything. 
without sacrificing your reload or DPM. Nevertheless, I understand things like this are personal preference and most players just feel more comfy with having calibrated shells and that's not a bad thing or nor is it wrong. In fact, most cases when it comes to equipment, there's no real right or wrong answer. Well, not really. There could however be silly choices, but that's something completely different. Next up, we have vitality. And again, we've got two. We have improved modules or the defense system. Now, both do pretty much the same thing, kind of, with one offering more protection over modules and damage due to ramming, whereas the other protects the crew and the engine rather than specific modules. Again, you really should consider carefully what equipment will benefit your tank. For example, if you like the 60TP or the E5, then no doubt improved modules with its 10% protection to the ammo rack is more preferred to that of the 7% offered against the ammo rack in the defense system. Same thing goes on tanks that are prone to engine damage, which is most of the German line because a lot of their engines are found in the front with a few exceptions. Now in that case, you may want to load up the defense system to get some protection for that engine rather than risk fires. Finally, we have specialization. Now our specialization again comes with two options, improved optics, which will increase the view range or a camo net that increases the camo profile. Generally, if you are running a TD, then a camo net is desired because TDs do have a very poor camo profile and that extra concealment does go a long way. Going back to the Jaegeru, it has a base camo profile of 30% stationary, 28% moving and 5% on firing when stationary. Now a camo net increases all of these quite a lot, 44% when stationary, 35% when moving and 8% respectively, which when moving or stationary does actually help you in a Jaegeru. Now contrast that with improved optics, which improves your view range in a Jaegeru from 259 meters to that of 268 meters. Now that sounds great, but in real terms, you are a TD. And as such, your lights and medium tanks should be doing the spotting for you. So why would you bother running improved optics on a TD? Now consider the Vickers light. It has a camo profile of 55, 55 and 12. So adding a camo net may sound useful, but on a tank that is meant to be running around the battlefield, it doesn't really add that much to it. Now increasing that value, it, which it does to 65, 60 and 15 is in real terms sounding pretty neat. Whereas improved optics, something the light tank really does need, that view range in the Vickers jumps from 274 meters to that of 302 meters, which is pretty significant indeed. Again, these are personal preferences, to be honest. And I know some light players who run a camo net wanting that little bit of extra camouflage protection, considering that the maps in Blitz aren't really that big. Now, the only thing I would say is that a camo net is useless on tanks like the mouse, because why would you? And optics aren't much use on tanks like the Death Star. And not really. I mean, come on, let's be honest. Moving down to tier two, we start again with combat power. This time we have the enhanced gun laying device and the supercharger. The former, the gun laying device, is designed to reduce the overall aim time, which in some tanks with you know, longish reloads, uh, is, is a rather useful piece of equipment. Now, again, there is little point sticking that equipment on tanks like the Vickers Light. I mean, it has a 1.54 second aim time, and therefore reducing that really doesn't make much of a difference, to be fair. However, Supercharge, on the other hand, could be a more preferred choice because it increases the chance of hitting and penetrating from distance as it increases the shell velocity by 30%. Supercharge, however, doesn't mean that you will pen. Obviously, you still need to hit that penetrating shot to begin with, but it is particularly helpful. Supercharge is particularly effective in tanks that don't require the enhanced gun laying device, but also those tanks that struggle with its velocity. Think along the lines of the Progetto 65 or the WZ-121, which has the lowest velocity of any tier 10 tech tree medium with a mere 1000. Now with a supercharge, 
the chances of getting those distance shots to cause things like track damage, etc., increases significantly. And with the aim times on both tanks being really, really good, especially the WZ-121, a supercharge makes more sense. At least it does to me. Next, we have Vitality. And here we are given the choice of Enhanced Armor, which grants a 4% increase to the hull and the turret, and Improved Assembly, which adds additional hit points. Now, I always find these two bits of equipment to be some of the hardest to choose, and my general rule is that on already heavily armored tanks, such as the Mouse, there is little to no point increasing the armor thickness by an additional 4%. It makes much more sense to increase the overall hit points in tanks like the Mouse, whereas tanks like the Grill 15, with its poor armor, could benefit a little bit more with that extra 4%. Moving to the specialization equipment in this tier, well, it consists of improved control, which increases the haul turn rate by 10%, and an engine accelerator. Again, these are tricky bits of equipment to choose, but with tanks like the Kranwagen, with its very slow turn rate, improved control kind of makes sense, especially as it already has a super speed boost attachment which puts a lot of power down into the engine very quickly. Tanks that are already pretty mobile, however, like the Object 140, can certainly benefit from an engine accelerator, not because it cr increases its overall speed. I mean, one kilometer's increase is nothing in real terms, but it puts more oomph into the engine and as such improves mobility across the spectrum. Coming to the final tier, we start with the vertical stabilizer and the refined gun. Now, a lot of people get a bit confused over these two bits of kit. The former, the vert stab, increases the accuracy of the tank when it's on the move. It doesn't increase accuracy when you're stationary, not really, which some seem to think. Now, what this means in practice is that the aim time is actually reduced. So you need to consider this when loading the enhanced gun lane device in tier two because in certain tanks, you really can bring that aim time down massively. For example, if we take the T62A, which has a base aim time of 1.72 seconds. Now, if you load both the gun laying device and the vert stab, you will be able to get that aim time down to 1.59 seconds, which is quite a significant drop. Again, however, it's not really useful on tanks such as TDs, which are designed to shoot from a stationary position rather than on the move. For TDs, it is always better to consider the refined gun because this reduces the dispersion over 100 meters. Now, what is dispersion? Well, dispersion is basically how far the shower will travel left, right, up, down within the aim and reticle from the center. Now, the greater the dispersion, the more the shower will travel away from the center. Now, with the refined gun, that reduces this and as such makes your tank a lot more accurate over distance. Not up close, just distance. So it's perfect for TDs, especially TDs like the 183, which are designed to sit relatively towards the back of the map. And with its terrible dispersion at any rate, really does need some more help. Moving over to Vitality. This is something that many players overlook. We start with the enhanced tracks. Now this is something that can be useful on certain types of tanks, especially those prone to track breaks, such as the E100. I mean, any good T62A or Object 140 player will be, will be smacking that front drive sprocket every time in an E100. So enhanced tracks allows the suspension in standard condition and allows the repair of suspension from a broken condition. So it could be useful. However, Tanks like the Yo don't need it because it has that strange, unbreakable track type feature. Now, Yo's benefit more from the toolbox feature, with, which increases module repair speeds by 30%. Very, very useful indeed. Again, these are personal preferences, and as such, some prefer to have the reduced repair rather than the stronger tracks and suspension. Finally, we come to specialization, which in this tier is rather bland, to be honest as both deal with consumable deliveries, really. We have the consumable delivery system first. Now, this reduces the cooldown time by 15%, which, 
which is useful if you want to load things like an aiming reticle in place of a second repair kit because it will cool down your single repair kit a lot quicker. We then have, however, eye-end consumables. Now these increase the overall effect of the consumable by 30%. That doesn't mean you'll have 30% better track repair. It means that when you've got consumables like the speed boost or the adrenaline, then you will get 30% more out of that. It will last that little bit longer, which in tanks that use AIM reticles, like the FV4005 or the Leo 1, you get that extra little bit of time, which is rather useful in a combat situation. Same with the adrenaline. I mean, if you drop adrenaline and you've got this 30% boost, your adrenaline is going to last a little bit longer. Now, that's been my very brief guide to equipment and what it all means and what you should be considering for your tanks. Most, as I say, are personal preference, but with a little bit of trial and error, you will eventually find what works best for your style of gameplay. And hopefully, it will increase your overall gameplay and enjoyability in tanks that you may be struggling in or you may think just don't pack that punch. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been my brief take on equipment guides and what you should be looking at. By all means, comment in everything below. Sorry about my uh, green screen going a bit weird in the background there. It's uh, it's a strange day today here in Dubai. Um, and the green screen is being, uh, well, prone to it. I still want to hear what your thoughts are. You may have some different takes on what equipment to load out. And that's always a good thing. Sharing knowledge is a great thing. So until the next time, guys, look forward to seeing your comments. Stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, that really is what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun and being happy.